welcome. Uh, this is the third lecture from the risk diagram and there is the heat and material balance for blast furnace iron making and this lecture will cover the risk diagram based on heat and material balance in the Wustide reserve zone, right. And, uh, and the basic concept covered basically blast furnace as a two stage reactor. This is very important we have to understand that blast furnace can be conceived as a two stage reactor and then we will develop a fully predictive model for the blast furnace that is the operating line a fixed operating line with two fixed point on the operating line such that it is fixed. So, co rate minimum co rate we can calculate from there this is basically we will discuss. Now, conceptual diffusion of the blast furnace through isothermal and chemical reserve zone. Now, if you see there is the first diagram if you see the diagram 1 this is one, this is the diagram if you consider then uh, this is basically the temperature profile of the solid, this is solid line is for the solid and the dotted line represent the gas temperature profile as it moves up as the distance as you move up above the two year line. This is basically the two year, this is basically the two year, this is the two year and as you are moving up in the two year sorry this write up is not very good. So, I will write it T U Y E R I think now it is this is the two year location and is as we moving up distance above the two year right this is the distance distance above two year line. So, what you can find is that here you can find that the gas is entering at around around it is the temperature in Kelvin this is around 2200 Kelvin, 2200 Kelvin this is around say 2000 degree centigrade. Basically, the gas in the combustion zone, in the combustion zone, the gas temperature, blast furnace gas temperature is around 2000 degree centigrade or 2273 like this or 2300 Kelvin, right. So, here the gas temperature. Now, the gas from 2000 degree centigrade to it is around 900 degree centigrade 1200 uh, you can see 1200 is basically around 900 something. So, 900 degree centigrade. So, gas temperature you can see uh, decreases from 2000 degree centigrade to 900 degree centigrade where the solid temperature increases from 900 to 1300 degree centigrade in this lower part of the furnace. So, obviously, in the lower part of the furnace why it is like this because the heat capacity of the solid is very high because a lot of endothermic reaction goes on as a result the heat demand of the solid is very large. So, the solid temperature increase from 900 to 1300 where the gas temperature decreases from 2000 to 900 degree centigrade within a very short distance in the lower part of the furnace within this much distance all these heat exchange take place in the lower part. After that you can find in this zone absolutely the temperature difference between the gas and solid is not that much. Okay. So, as a result no significant heat exchange take place and this region the temperature is almost constant in this region the temperature is almost constant and it is called the thermal reserve zone or isothermal zone you can call it also a isothermal zone. So, it is called the isothermal zone or the thermal reserve zone a significant portion of the blast furnace where temperature of the solid and gas almost remain constant. And theoretically speaking that is the practically speaking it can be 800 to 1000 degree centigrade but average temperature you can say 900 degree centigrade. So, in this region the temperature even constant at around 900 degree centigrade is called the isothermal zone or thermal reserve zone and in the upper part you can find again the solid temperature increases from 30 degree to 900 where the gas temperature decreases from 900 to around 200 degree or 150 degree centigrade. Okay. So, they are basically obviously the heat capacity of the gas is more than that of the solid and the heat capacity of this gas is more than that of the solid because the gas temp decrease in gas temperature is less compared to increase in solid temperature in the upper part anyway. But here also some heat exchange take place in the upper part in this region 
and in the lower part heat exchange takes place in this region and in the middle zone this much of zone absolutely no heat exchange take place almost and the solid and the gas temperature uh, remain almost at 900 degree centigrade right. Now, so you can simply think there is the blast furnace can be divided into two parts yeah, and we can make a separate heat balance for the upper part as well as lower part. In this zone basically no heat exchange take place that is one thing. Now, it is from heat transfer point of view if you see the chemical composition of the gas, gas composition how does it vary longitudinally as you move from the two air above this above the two air. So, how does it vary you can find the gas O by C ratio is equal to 1 means the product gas is basically C O. When the gas is completely C O 100 percent C O then O by C ratio is equal to 1. So, O by C ratio you can see it is almost 1 up to this portion that is the that is only C O basically C O 2 is not there whatever the C O 2 produce because of reduction it immediately get converted to C O by carbon gasification right C O 2 gasify the carbon to C O gas. So, obviously reduction is taking place, but immediately the C O 2 generated from the indirect reduction that is used up to gasify the carbon to C O. So, the gas composition almost remains C O up to this point and beyond this point you can find that the C O 2 is coming into the system C O 2 is coming in because the carbon gasification reaction slows down as you move up as the temperature decreases then this reaction that is the C O 2 in situ generation this reaction is called the carbon gasification reaction it intensity basically its intensity goes down as you move up. As a result the C O generation decreases but CO2 is continuously forming because of ore, ore reduction that is the indirect reduction of the ore your CO2 is generating. But this generation of CO is not that high as a result the gas is accumulating CO2. So, as the gas CO2 is increasing your O by C ratio increasing O by C ratio is increasing indicating that is the CO2 in the CO CO2 gas mixture is increasing right. So, with increasing increasing and then you can find again the O by C has become constant during this region in this portion O by ratio and O by C is around 1.3 O by C ratio is 1.3 and it is constant. What does it mean basically in this case here what happens that this reaction become in equilibrium that is the FeO plus CO basically forming Fe plus CO2. So, up to this portion there is a direct reduction beyond that indirect reduction is taking place basically whatever the CO form in the lower part that is used up into the indirect reduction and you are generating the CO2 and this CO2 basically accumulating into the gas your O by C ratio is decreasing and then it become constant for a certain length of the blast furnace that is called and then that portion this come into equilibrium this reaction come into equilibrium and I know this reaction when it comes into equilibrium this reaction equilibrium reaction if you write as I said in the thermodynamic class that is the blast furnace then uh, what I say what we found is that basically for this reaction for this indirect reduction CO utilization is only 30 percent. CO utilization is 30 percent basically this reaction we write in this way FeO plus 3.3 CO is forming Fe plus 2.3 of CO plus CO2. Basically out of 3.3 basically if you want to remove 1 gram atom of oxygen you require 3.3 mole of CO only out of which 2.3 mole of CO will remain in equilibrium with the CO2 and only one mole of CO will be used up to take out the ore oxygen. Okay. So, that is the thing we have seen and uh, so basically if we write it in this fashion um, what is your O by C ratio? What is the O by C ratio that you can find? basically we know that is only 30 percent CO is utilized. Basically CO2 by CO plus CO2 is only 0 0.3 for this reaction and this corresponds to 
basically 2.3 and CO by CO2 ratio is 2.3, CO by CO2 this ratio is equal to 2.3, CO by CO2 ratio is 2.3. And from this, this corresponds to O by C. If you calculate the O by C, that will be 1. You can simply calculate it and you can see O by C will be 1.3. So, this O by C is equal to 1.3 basically represent a equilibrium. That is, the, this equilibrium, this equilibrium is represented by this O by C is equal to 1.3. So, what I want to mean is that um, you are at this point. So, this region that is the FeO plus CO, this reaction come into the FeO, 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 they this reaction become in equilibrium, they come into the equilibrium condition, equilibrium. So, you can find there is this is also called the chemical reserve zone or the chemical inactive zone, you can say. So, in this region, you can see. So, if I cut this blast furnace this way, in this reaction, there is a separate heat balance there is a you can simply do the separate mass balance also because I have an equilibrium line here that is here I have an equilibrium. So, this portion come to an equilibrium also. So, I can separately make a heat and material balance on this is also called the Wustite reserve zone. This portion is called the Wustite reserve zone because Wustite FeO Fe comes into equilibrium in this zone okay? and also I can do a separate heat balance. I do not require this apart because I can perfectly do a separate heat balance here and also you can see this O by C ratio also become constant in the upper part of this zone. Okay. So, I can make a separate heat and material balance on this Ustide reserve zone and from there I can derive the operating line. So, that I will be doing basically. So, if now you can see this is the scenario, this is this is what this is the blast furnace if you can uh, this is the way you can divide the blast furnace in two parts this is the upper part and the lower part okay and this is called the ustide reduction zone or ustide reserve zone okay so here what are the input you can find from there in the upper part here when the input is ustide basically solid will come as ustide here you are entering in the upper part you are entering the fe2o3 entering Fe 2 3. Now, Fe 2 3 will convert to Ustide in this region completely and then the Ustide because Fe 2 3 to Fe 3 4, Fe 3 4 to FeO and this FeO will enter in the Ustide reserve zone at 1200 Kelvin, 1200 Kelvin means around 900 degree centigrade. Okay. So, FeO Ustide will enter into this and then the carbon will also enter at 900 degree centigrade or 1200 K and the gas will also exit at 1200 K and the gas composition is also fixed O by C is equal to 1.3 because upper part of the Rustide reserve zone FeO Fe equilibrium is established where O by C is 1.3 right. So, this is also known to me now and your air blast is coming through here at 1400 Kelvin okay? and the liquid iron is leaving at 1800 Kelvin. So, this is the system. So, I will just make a heat balance of the Ustide reserve zone, heat and material balance and I can get the operating line. Okay. So, based on this data again I can do later on the heat balance in the upper part heat and material balance. So, that will give me actually what is the exit gas temperature, what is the exit gas that is the those things temperature also you can get. But exit gas composition from here also you can you can just extrapolate the line and you can get the exit gas composition also. So, now let us go to this thing that is the first let us do the enthalpy balance. Now, this is for the material balance if you see the material balance okay, if you see the material balance is okay. this is NOB, NOB that is NOB means that is the blast oxygen that is coming in per gramet of mobile iron produced. And what is the oxygen coming through the iron ore? Ore is ustite and 1 gramatom of ustite contain 1.06 gramatom of oxygen. So, this plus this, okay, this is from the blast oxygen, this is the ore oxygen is equal to NCA active rate of carbon in O by C, this is O by C and O by C is equal to 1.3. So, this is the simple material balance in the ustite reserve zone. Right. Now, let us do the heat balance and heat balance I have seen just if I know what is the demand and what is the supply, I can equate that is the enthalpy balance will be done. right? 
I will do better that way. So, what is the total enthalpy balance that is the what is the demand in this case let us see. So, demand is this thing these are the oustite zone reserve zone demand first is the decomposition of the oustite because oustite will come and that is decompose and uh, and for gram atom of iron you require basically 1.06 mole of oustite right. So, multiplied by the heat of formation of oustite that is just reverse of decomposition that is why a negative sign is has come here. So, so this thing is basically a positive number finally. So, this is the heat demand for oustite decomposition and then what is this? This is basically sensible enthalpy of liquid iron uh, that is the liquid iron standard enthalpy of liquid iron at 1800 Kelvin minus uh, that is the standard enthalpy of the solid iron at 1200 because iron is entering uh, at 1200 degree centigrade with the oustite. Along with oustite you are entering basically the iron is entering in the form of oustite at 1200. So, that is why this is there and uh, this is and the finally, the iron is leaving in the form of liquid form at 1800 Kelvin. So, standard enthalpy of liquid iron at 1800 minus the standard enthalpy of solid iron at 1200 that is entering right. And plus what is that? This is the two heat demand. One thing is decomposition and the sensible enthalpy, sensible and retent enthalpy of iron that you are giving plus some amount of carbon. Oh, carbon is entering at 1200, a part of the carbon going to the hot metal. So, that we have considered here and how much carbon is going C by F e that gives you that is the percentage of carbon that is going into the hot metal C by F e that is the carbon per gram atom of iron that is in into that is the enthalpy standard enthalpy of dissolved carbon that is in this thing at 1800 minus standard enthalpy of solid carbon at 1200 that is entering right. So, this is basically the demand term and plus you have other term and another two term will be there uh, plus delta H of the slag because of slag formation plus delta H of the loss and because of loss through the furnace lot of losses are there. So, another two term will be there this is the total heat demand. Now, if you consider the supply term then what are the terms that we have. So, supply what are the supply term is there then in case of the supply you see what are there one is that heat of formation of the CO and the CO gas is leaving at 1200. So, heat of formation of CO at 1200 and heat of formation of CO2 at 1200 and with their uh, multiplied by their respective moles of CO and CO2 that is one thing that is basically the heat generation that is the supply. Oh, another supply term is there because of sensible enthalpy through the uh, air blast because air blast is entering at a higher temperature 1400 Kelvin and it is leaving at and the nitrogen basically nitrogen and oxygen entering at 1400 Kelvin and then leaving at 1200 Kelvin. So, you have some sensible enthalpy. So, that is also will be there. So, that can be calculated in this form that is the NOV. NOV is basically the kg atom of or gram atom of oxygen that is entering ok and half is there because half term is coming because of this. This is basically the oxygen standard enthalpy of oxygen is 1400 minus standard enthalpy of oxygen at 1200. So, this is and half you are doing because NOV is called gram atom ok. So, 2 gram atom of oxygen make one mole of oxygen. So, that is why half term is coming and plus the nitrogen also nitrogen entering there is a standard enthalpy entering at 1400 minus nitrogen leaving at standard enthalpy of nitrogen at 1200. So, this is the uh, sensible enthalpy of nitrogen that is giving into the oustite reserve zone sensible enthalpy of oxygen that is also given to the oustite reserve zone. So, so, this is basically the sensible enthalpy that is coming through the blast and this is the enthalpy generation because of carbon oxidation to CO and CO2. This is the total supply and this supply if you write in this form in the algebraic manipulation you can write in this form finally ok. So, EB, EB stands for this term basically your EB is EB is this term this is the EB this is the E V term this is called your E V E V that is the excess enthalpy of the blast that is called the E V excess enthalpy of the blast that is defined like this and including the half of this thing. 
So, n o v into e v is coming from there and this term if you rearrange in terms of O by C you can write like this. There is a simple algebra manipulation. And so, finally, you can write this is equal to you can write like this that the n C A into this plus n o v of this. Because if I put the value of a enthalpy of formation of C O, enthalpy of formation of C O 2 sorry, okay, this is the supply. And then let us see the combined form of Wooster deduction zone. If I use the combined form, that is, that the material balance and heat balance, if we just combine and and we eliminate the O by C from both of them, and then finally the heat demand in the Wooster reserve zone can be correlated like this, and some algebraic manipulation you can come here and finally here. Okay, so these are just algebraic manipulation. What I have done, demand is equal to supply, and also I have eliminated. Uh, the O by C from the material balance and the enthalpy balance, right. So, finally, you can get that and you can get this equation and this equation you can find here also you can write like this that is y 2 minus of this is y 1 okay, is equal to m of x 2 minus of x 1. So, you can write in this form the equation where y 2 is equal to 1.06 and y 1 is whole term is basically this is whole term, this whole term is this is y 1. So, weight whole term, this whole term is equal to y 1 and this term is y 2 and is equal to m into x 2 minus x 1, x 2 is basically this and x 1 is this whole term, right. So, again it is a straight line, but you can find that is the x 2 x 1 and y 2 y 1 all are defined, all can be defined. There is the two fixed point on the operating line. So, we have two lines you can find from there as I say y 2 minus y 1 x 2 minus x 1 and then two points we are getting that is the x 1 y x 1 y 1 this is basically x 2 and y 2. So, a and b two points are there on the risk diagram. So, you can find two points I have got one point is that one point is this one this is basically there is the point B, this is the point B, uh, this is the point B and this is the point A. This is 1.3, 1.06, this is the point A and this is the point B. So, also this point here A and B I have written basically here we are calling it as H, H is the thermal pinch point and W is another point I am calling it A also here basically that is basically W is basically called the chemical pinch point. This is another point is there. Basically this shows that is this thing is basically the F u equilibrium, F u, F u equilibrium line that is at 1.3 basically F u and the gas composition 1.3 means that is the, the equilibrium point for F u, F u reduction. This is the equilibrium point. So, if you if the line can never go like this. So, if I want to draw a line like this. So, this is not a feasible line, this is not a feasible line from this point of view because this line will not satisfy this equilibrium point of a few a few equilibrium. Okay. But any line like this if I if I can if I can draw like a line like this, this is feasible, this is a possible line, but this is the optimum line, this is the optimum or minimum concrete optimum or minimum cochrate. This gives the optimum minimum cochrate, but this line is feasible. All these three lines are passing through this H, passing through this, this line is possible, but this line is not possible because it will not, okay. this line will not satisfy this point if you, if you equilibrium. This line will not satisfy, this line will satisfy and this is the optimum line. So, now we get that uh, this is the thing that is by doing the Wooster reserve zone heat and material balance, I get basically two point one is called that is uh, that is called the thermal pinch point H, another is called the uh, this point is called the chemical pinch point. This is the thermal pinch point, thermal pinch point. and this is called the chemical pinch point. And the line has to follow both this line, okay. the line has to follow, but you can have a 
other line like this line is possible as I said, but this type of line are not feasible. No line can go beyond this point, that is the thing. No line can go beyond this point, this direction. Line can move, but that will be less efficient line. But this is the most efficient line. This is this optimum line is the most efficient line. You can have some, uh, you can have some less efficient line as I said, this is the feasible but less efficient. Feasible but less efficient. This is the feasible and most efficient. And uh, a line, what I is telling is that a line like this, a line like this is not possible. A line like this is not possible. So, that is the thing what I want to say. I have just repeated twice. And uh, so, now some problem that is a, a problem is a blast furnace is operating with the dry hot, hot air blast at 1400 Kelvin. The charge consists of hematite. Sinter, CO, coke, its product metal contain 5 percent carbon and its slag may be considered consist of CO and SiO2. All these things are given basically. So, you have to calculate from there. Uh, this problem is uh, I, I, we, uh, we have solved it and so, Ustai desertion. So, what is basically the you have to first calculate the demand, all the terms are given here. So, you calculate the demand. And to calculate the demand, basically you can see here all the demand term I have added. One is the Ustide basically decomposition, then the sensible and little enthalpy of iron, then the sensible little enthalpy of the carbon, and then the heat loss due to slag and heat loss due to the uh, atmosphere. Okay. And according to this problem, I can calculate the weight of the silica and the weight of the calcium oxide and then total weight of the slag. And based on the total weight of the slag, we can calculate what is the enthalpy of the slag that given minus 400 per kg of slag. So, you can get that thing. And the heat loss also one formula is there, from there we can calculate it because basically this is this much of kg joule per kg mole of iron produced, this will be the heat loss. From that formula, you can simply calculate. So, finally, you can calculate what is the total heat demand of the direct reduction uh, Ustai desert zone by this formula. So, this will be around 347,000 kilojoule per kg mole and excess enthalpy of the blast also you can given, uh, uh, you can calculate this value are taken from the literature. So, you can do that is the around 17,000 kilojoule per kg atom of oxygen, okay, per kg atom of oxygen will be the excess enthalpy, okay. And multiplied by the you NOB know, that will give you the excess enthalpy that is coming out 17,000 kilojoule per kg mole of iron produced multiplied by the NOV then. Okay. So, then Ustai reserve zone you have this point there is a thermal pinch point you have the uh, this is the chemical pinch point is known is constant 1.3 1.06 because basically this is the Ustai equilibrium uh, composition and then the thermal pinch point is given like this you need to know what is the heat demand and the E B and both the term we have calculated already. So, we know those values, put those values. So, you can get the thermal pinch point also. Then in CA you can simply calculate here because two points, two fixed points. So, slope is constant, that is the slope 1.648. From there you can calculate the coke rate, that is the kg per ton of. This is basically kg atom of iron per kg atom of, uh, kg atom of carbon per kg atom of iron produced. Just convert it to kg of carbon per ton of iron, right. So, then you can get the coke rate. Uh, then you can get the blast rate also, NOB you can calculate, slope you know. So, NOB you can calculate, from NOB you can calculate the blast rate, there is a normal meter cube. And then you can have O by C also you can calculate because slope you know. So, simply you can get the O by C and then you calculate number of moles of CO, number of moles of CO2, number of moles of nitrogen and then simply the gas composition you can get. So, this is a simple example then these notes are there you can follow it. So, what we get from there, uh, so this is also from the Davenport if you have this is the ebook is available, uh, ebook is available free of cost in the internet you can download this book and have this. So, conclusion is that heat and material balance is the Ustride reserve zone makes the operating line of risk diagram fixed with 0 degrees of freedom and a fully predictive model. Fully predictive model means in the line we have two point and two point makes a straight line fixed. So, we have, so we can have a, a what is that called the minimum or optimum coke rate, but the furnace can operate 
uh, along the fulcrum of the thermal pinch point, but it can be less efficient only. If the line moves on the left hand side, it is less efficient. On the right hand side, line cannot move because then you will not satisfy the equilibrium requirement of the FUO FE system. So, so this is all. Uh, thank you very much. And you consult the book of Devonport, and that will be helpful. Or Professor Deepak Bonjunda, one book is there that is also nicely described this all this uh, what is that called heat and material balance. And some intricacies are also there. For the example, the silicon reduction and the phosphorus reduction, we have not considered those oxygen, we have not considered, but we can easily incorporate into those. And this model can be extended for suppose pulverized coal injection, and then we can change the material balance and then we can. So, for any condition, this uh, risk diagram can be little modified for your blast furnace situation and then you can predict the optimum coke rate, you can predict what is the gas composition and you what is the blast rate and all these things. Uh, hopefully, uh, this lecture will be helpful for heat and material volume balance and the calculating different important pa parameters in the industry. Thank you very much.